Hi, I'm Harold Bell, and this is the Legends of Inside Sports and the Way We Were. On today's show, my question, will the coronavirus make America one? It has many of us thinking about our immortality here on earth. And will we survive to see another day? This virus does not have a cut card, meaning it attacks everyone. It is not discriminating like some people. It attacks movie stars, politicians, and even little children. Leadership seems to have no clue on how to curb this deadly virus. We all have a testimony and a story to tell about our days here on earth. My testimony and story may be different from yours. I recently heard we cannot afford to look back because we may miss what is ahead for us. But regardless, we have a story to tell. Life has been less than fair for many of us, and there surely has not been anything resembling an even playing field. I don't normally participate in telephone conference calls with folks I don't know, especially when I don't have a clue the format. But several days ago, I made an exception when I saw a familiar name in my text. The call was scheduled between 8.30 p.m. and 9 p.m. I was watching the ESPN special, O.J. Simpson, Made in America. Those of you who are not familiar with the story, it's about an NFL superstar who crossed over and could not or would not find his way back to the other side of town where he belonged. He was not the first and he will not be the last. OJ and his counterpart, the great NFL running back Jim Brown, have a lot in common, believe me. I asked my wife to excuse me because I need to watch OJ Simpson Made in America like I need to watch a rerun of Rodney King that was also made in America. I made the conference call about 8.45, late for the 8.30 starting time, and early for the 9 p.m. starting time. I successfully joined the conversation, and I listened for several minutes while someone I assumed was talking about the state of America's newest crisis, the coronavirus, and where do we go from here? I did not know whether the person who was doing the talking was the moderator or a participant who had been asked to join the call as I was. When the person doing the talking paused, I waited a moment for someone else to jump in and add their two cents, but no one did. So I did what I do best and added my two cents. I am always amazed how it takes a tragedy for Americans to understand that we are all in this together. It took Hurricane Katrina in 2005. It was the costliest national disaster in American history. 15 years later, people of color are still homeless and are left on the outside looking in in the state of Louisiana. September 11, 2001, an attack on the World Trade Center in New York City is now known as 9-11, was another eye-opener. The terrorists were truly colorblind. We now find ourselves in the midst of the coronavirus. A commentary in the New Yorker magazine read, we must start envisioning the future now. Is this a call for one and one for all? If it is, I've seen and heard this act before. For example, Black Wall Street, Tulsa race rise in 1921. A successful black town, folks had their own banks, grocery stores, insurance companies. 
and jealous whites from another town came in and murdered hundreds of black Americans. Hundreds of black Americans. Well, it didn't get any better. In Mississippi in 1955, a 14-year-old Emmett Till, visiting from Detroit, whistled at a white woman in a store and was found lynched. Then there were four little black girls blown up in a church. And then there was civil rights leader, Edgar Everett, murdered in his driveway in Alabama in 1963. This all happened in Alabama in 1963. The race rides before and after the Martin Luther King assassination, our Prince of Peace in 1968. I was caught in the middle of those rides, working as a youth gang task force uh, member for the Department of Recreation and Parks. The Rodney King beat down by LA cops in 1991, caught on videotape. Then there was the 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, shot and killed in 2012. In 2014, Eric Gardner was choked to death on a New York street in broad daylight by cops for selling new cigarettes. This was also on videotape. But guess what? After all of these tragedies in our community, it was back to business as usual for white America. Thanks to our system of justice and just us, these acts of violence against people of color are called white privilege or white collar crime. You know, like I said, we all have a testimony and have stories of our own about our life, our life in America. I want you to listen to this testimony that may be similar to yours. I know it's similar to mine. Sword in his hand. I was trapped on a fantasy island land. A black dad 
two waiting for my plane to land. And I didn't understand that I need to put all my trust in God, not man. Pain became my teacher, not God. Preachers, along with police caravans, metal bracelet bands, hospital bed pans, lawyers worth a hundred grand. I was moving too fast to stand. Still trapped by my own will with an empty space to fill. I was drowning like a fish with no gills. I wanted to take my nine mil and end it all. But see, God wouldn't let me drop the ball. Because even though my life was like Saul, inside he saw Paul. And through it all, he said, son, before I raise you up, you must fall. So I did. I put my bed in with the devil and backslid to a subterranean level that left me thinking that everything I had was sellable. It was incredible to experience the inevitable. The man in the mirror became my worst enemy. He was no longer a friend to me. I was a drone, alone with its circuits blown. God stood knocking at my door, but I wasn't home. I was headed for self-destruction, headed for self-destruction. Conjunction Junction had lost its function. I was stuck. And like Chuck D from Public Enemy, it made me bad. So I had to put the pen to the pad and give you something you never had. See, Michael Jackson was talking about God when he broke bad. And I should have been dead like Fred, like Curtis Mayfield said a long time ago. But see, God spared my life for a reason. And he said, go and spit this tight flow and let the whole world know that y'all don't have to go to the place where I chose to go. But see, we all must go through something before God lets us grow. And what God's got for you is for you, and what he's got for me is for me. And when he sets us free, we are truly free, because of his blood shed on Calvary. There is no great prison of ours, a clicking one, two, three. Only his grace and his mercy allow me to share me um, testimony. Yep. That was testimony. But let me tell you guys something. His story is similar to mine. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Two trillion dollars will not get us out of this coronavirus. Only God's mercy will get us out of this. You know, I don't know where we're going from here or where I'm going from here. <laughs> but I tell you what. I hope that I'm around to see America become great again when we one for all and all for one, but I doubt it. Well, that's going to be it for the Legends of Inside Sports. I'm Harold Bell. You can color me gone, and maybe I'll see you on the other side.